G'day everyone, today I've come out yabbying. This is one of the three dams that I was in when I caught those really big yabbies the other day. The task for today is to try and get a feed of large yabbies. I don't want 100, I don't want 75. Eight or nine would be nice, a dozen would be great. It's great to be out here. I just hope I get a few big ones. I've got some lambs fry with me that I've just picked up from Coles in Wangaratta. I've got four of these drop nets this time, I'm using drop nets. It's not really yabby-ish, it feels a little bit on the cool side, but it's better than being at work. And I've got to tell you, somebody broke into my house last night and stole the rubber ducks out of my bath. But I've worked out who it was. It was the robber ducky. Robber ducky. My friend Wooly told me that and it's really bad. <laughs> The combination of this long stick and my gum boots mean I can walk out a little bit lower the neck down, ensuring it doesn't get tangled when I throw it on an angle. How's that for a little bit of improvising? The string wasn't long enough to come back to the edge, so I stuck a stick in the mud in the water and wrapped my float around the stick. <laughs> Cord too short, no problem. Righty -o. I've got four drop nets in this little dam. That's not very deep, but we know there's yabbies here because I caught them here on the weekend. I reckon I'll give them about five minutes. That's all I'll give them. I won't give them long. If that doesn't work, well then I'll put them back and I'll give them 15. But we'll start with five and take it from there. It's always a good idea to put the water in your bucket before you actually check your nets. That way if you do happen to hit the jackpot and get quite a few big ones, you're not going to put them in there to kill each other. They've got a bit of water. And if you do get quite a few yabbies, one good tip, get a heap of dry grass and put, them in the, put it in the water with the yabbies and that'll just help keep the yabbies separ separated from each other and it'll also allow them to climb to the top to get air. If you've got plenty of yabbies in your bucket, put some long dry grass in there just to keep them separated. You got to keep them separated. <laughs> Right, well these nets have only been in around about five minutes, but I think that's good. that's long enough in a dam that I know it's got a few yabbies in it. So we'll check it, and if I don't catch any with five minute intervals, well maybe next time I'll give them 10 or 15. I've got my stick. I don't need the stick to pull the nets out, but I do need it to lower them back down if I want them to sit on the, on the bottom of the dam properly. That's, this is the exciting part. Let's go and check them.
Look at that. He is a ripper. Hopefully he is a he. He is a he. Have a look at that. A really nice size yabby. Not the biggest I've caught from this dam, but still a good one. I've got four nets in. Three of them yielded nothing. This net yielded three nice yabbies. Is five minutes long enough? Uh, well, apparently it is for this net, but not the other three. <laughs> I might give them quarter of an hour this time and see if that makes any difference. You ripper. Look at that. Nice size claws on that one. I was a bit worried a cold change has come through. It's quite cool today. There's a strong, cool, dry, southerly breeze. And I've just been a bit worried that they might turn the yabbies off. But it looks like there's still a few. He's not as big as what I've been getting, but he's still a nice size yabby. Sometimes when the yabbies won't let go, a little trick you can do is just hold them, let, let them hang like that. Even if you let them hang above the water, dip their tail in the water and they go. Once they've got their tail in the water and they're holding onto the meat, they'll let go of the meat and head for the water. So tip the net upside down, dangle the yabby's tail in the bucket and he'll let go for you. Now put this back in. Isn't that just amazing? Three in one net and none in the other three nets. This time I'll go, I'll go and get some dry grass and put it in that water to keep the yabbies separated in the anticipation that I'm gonna get a few more. And this time I'll give them a quarter of an hour to 20 minutes, give them a bit longer for the yabbies to really find the nets. There we go. There's the dry grass. I'll put that in the bucket. That'll give the yabbies a way to escape from each other to stop them uh, biting each other's claws off. It'll also give them a way to climb up to the top of the water to get some oxygen out of the air. Right now, it's time to check the nets again. I was going to give them 15 minutes this time, but I thought I'll just give them a bit longer. So I've given them a quarter of an hour instead. Let's see if there's any yabbies on them. Whoa! Did you see that? Did you see the size of a huge big black one that big right on the edge of the net when I pulled it out? Next time I'm going to use the stick to help me lift it up to prevent that from happening because he was a monster, but at least I know where he is. Yabby come back. He was huge. Big black yabby. No, nothing. I've got one. I've got one in here. Remember what I said earlier, if they don't let go of the meat, hold them above the water, upside down. Dip their tail in the water, and there they go. Here's a nice yabby. Once again, still not a monster yabby. Not half as big as that big black one that got out of the net before. I really hope I see him again today. <laughs> but he'll do. Remember, I only want a dozen or so, and I've already got four in the bucket, so things are looking good. This was the prize winning net last pull. This is the glory net, and it is again. For the second time in a row, we've got the trifecta. We have got one quite large yabby. I would hate for him to bite me on the finger. <laughs> he doesn't want to let go. I don't know, sometimes if you put him on the ground, they'll just let go and start walking backwards towards the water. <laughs> He's quite a nice yabby. Notice on this yabby, and you see this a lot with yabbies, they get these really little white things on them that look like leeches. They're just some kind of a parasite. They're, uh, 
they're, um, they're harmless to us, but what I do, before I cook them, I put them in a bucket or a sink or a tub or something and put a heap of salt in the water and the salt in the water this forces these little parasites to let go and leave the yabby squeaky clean before you cook it. I think I've got I've got seven in the bucket. Looking things are looking promising. I really want that big black yabby to come back. If you happen to be yabbing in a dam and you find heaps of old claws, bits and pieces of claws and shells, that's always a really good sign. <laughs> that's something you can look for when you're doing a bit of reconnaissance work or a bit of recon work looking for a good dam. Look for a dam that's got claws and shells around the edges of it because that's obviously a sign that there either is or has been yabbies in that dam. Righty, yeah, it's time to check the nets again. I really hope this big black one has made its way back into this net. I'm using the stick this time. Uh -uh. He didn't make his way back. Right now, if this net doesn't have any yabbies in it, I'll leave it out. And after I've checked the other two, I'm going to put it on the other side of the dam where I've been seeing the most action. Here we go, I've got two. I've got two. They're more of a sandy colour than the other yabbies. I suspect maybe they've come in from another dam. They're also not as big. What I might do, I'll keep them for now. That way if I don't catch too many more, I've got to feed. But if I get a few more big ones, when it's time to go home, I'll throw them back. By having that grass in the bucket, I know that I can put these yabbies in there with each other and they won't kill each other because they're separated Separated by grass, if that makes sense. This is the glory net. Had, I've checked it twice and it's had three yabbies in it each time. Let's see if it can continue the trend. <laughs> it's gone three, three, nothing. Yabby, come at me. Ever since I lost that big black yabby in this net before, I haven't had another touch, I haven't seen another yabby in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the nets. Now also, this is the last time I'm going to put them in. I'm going to check them now, then I'm going to put them back, then check them in about 20 minutes for the last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hands and crush the meat and try and bring some of the muddy, bloody, yucky meat out from the inside just to make it smell a bit stronger. You see that? It's all pale and anemic looking. If I poke my thumb through there, it's all... It's a much darker red and bloody on the inside, you see that? It's a little bit gross. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know why I do the things I do. That was not one of the smartest things I've ever done. Spare of the moment thing, I thought, I'll just do something crazy. That tastes terrible. Raw, raw liver that's been in that dirty water for the last hour and a half. Bloody beautiful. <laughs> I just caught a really nice yabby with one claw, one huge big claw in the last net. But we had a camera malfunction, so you're not going to get to see that bit of footage. <laughs> 
So I've checked two nets and I've caught one big one with one claw. Let's see if this net's done any good. Nope. Nothing in this net, just like the last two. I'll dig my hands in and I'll match the uh, match the meat up. Look at this! We've got we've got a little baby carp. I think I believe that's a crucian carp. <laughs> I'll throw into buggery. Right now in the net there are look I'll throw that one back. I don't need I've kept a couple that size earlier, but now I don't know I don't need to. I'll throw him back in the dam. So I've got these two big ones here. I've got this big old cookie. This one's not a bad one, I'll keep him. I'll get this bigger one. Oh, whoops, missed the bucket. Sorry, mate. And I'll put this one back in the dam. He's, I've got a couple in the bucket that size already. I probably didn't need to keep him, but I didn't know I was gonna catch all these big ones now. So I'll, uh, I'll throw him back as long as the other couple I just threw back. Things are looking good. I'll put my thumb in the meat here and stir up the blood. Get a bit of strong scent happening. I'll put this in now. Right, yeah, that's exciting. I've got probably 12 or 14 nice yabbies. I'm gonna do, leave them in for the last time. I'll do the final pull. I might give them a bit longer this time. I might give them 25 minutes to half an hour, then pull them out and go home. Right, yeah, folks, I've had to change cameras because I'm having a few memory card issues with the other camera. So the audio won't be as good. Hopefully there's not too much wind noise. Now we're going to check all four nets, pull them out and head home. Let's see if we can just catch a couple of monsters on our last run around the nets. Oh, did you see that? It happened again. There was a big black one on the edge of the net that flicked out of the net and got back into the water. I don't think it was as big as the big black SKP from earlier today, but he was still a nice yabby, and he's a nice yabby that's not in my net. Now, if you have a look at the meat here, one of the things I really like most about using lamb's fry as bait is that you can just rip it out. You can rip it out. You don't have to cut it out. You can just rip it out of the net and then un undo your strings and stuff when you get home. There you go, look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. I won't lick my hand this time, that was a bit gross before. Give it a wash. Give my hand a wash. I'll worry about the strings and stuff in the net later on when I get home. Rightio, the second last net. Hopefully no big black escapees. <laughs> There's four in the net. Have a look down here. There's four in the net. This one can go back. He's a, a nice yabby from some dams, but not so nice from this one. This guy's uh, actually got a nice sized tail. He's um, not going to enjoy his time in the bucket too much though because he hasn't got any claws. He's easier for me to carry though. And this one, yeah, I think he'll do. So I've got three more to put in the net. Right, yeah, second last net. That's got nothing. I've gone from four to nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, the last hurrah, and I apologise if there's any wind noise. Oh, I've got three, but look at the size of this big one. These two little ones can be released back into the dam and this big black one with an extra claw can be released into the bucket. <laughs> right, yeah, now this is the last thing I'm going to do before I head off. I've already checked my nets, I've put them in the car ready to go. I'm going to sort out my yabbies because I've kept a few smaller ones when I first got here earlier, not knowing whether I was going to get a few big ones. I've got more than enough big ones so I'm going to put the smaller ones back. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to pull the, uh, the grass out of this bucket here. I'll put all that on the ground beside the bucket. I'll tip a heap of the water out. So I'll tip everything out. I'll tip it all out onto the ground here. And these are my catch. I want these big ones. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's 18 in there. I'll keep 16, I think 16 is not a bad number. I'll throw these ones back, they're a little bit on the small side. They're okay in some waterways, and I'll keep them ones there for a feed. That's a good feed without being too greedy.